So uh, in the picture, we have put all the information you need and also the tasks are ready in the picture. So there are different ways of using this picture. So you can use a flipped classroom learning. So give the task for the pupils before they participate your lesson so they can do the exercises in home and then you can go in the more deeper teams you decide with the children. Or then uh, you can take this individual task when you are with the children in a classroom so they can be in pairs or by individuals and do the task and then you gather together. Or you can uh, reflect the picture in the video projector and you all are working together with the same picture. And as you can see, when I uh, go in the picture, I can see the little boxes which are telling me information about the picture. And here are the tasks we were talking about. So dwell and describe what you see and read and uh, interpret. And here uh, be creative. But let's have a more closer look what we actually see here. So Risto, so when I first see this kind of picture, how should I know that we are now in the orthodox tradition and looking for something that is very common in the orthodox tradition? What kind of marks or signs I should be looking for? First of all, of course, is quite different uh, way to express uh, the whole things uh, when we are looking, uh, for example, a painting about the same topic, because in the paintings uh, there are not that much details, for example, what we can see here in an icon. And uh, especially this icon is more or less uh, with a style of a narrative uh, approach concerning uh, the topic uh, uh, describing the birth of Jesus Christ, for example. Uh, I mean that uh, it's the content, what kind of things it's expressing to us and how rich it's in the details, uh, what we can see, what we can read from the picture, in this case from the an icon. And, uh, I can say that it's quite natural uh, and one have to focus also to the colors. And the most of all, I'd like to say concern the icons is the perspective, because uh, it's a reverse perspective uh, when we are looking at, for example, normal paintings. Those things uh, I think are the most essential, essential things when we are looking on icon. Yeah, as, as we can see, there's a lot of happening in that icon. And you already said that it's about Christmas time and the birth of Jesus. And I have also heard that this is like a reading uh, comics because there are different happenings which are in the same picture. So as you said, a narrative form of art here. And at the first, if we take the dwell and describe, it was the thing that you said about the colors and shapes. So even though if the children don't really know, for example, the Christmas story or don't even recognize the figures here, all can participate, for example, looking the colors where you can find green color what is the color you first see okay it's probably red and where do you can find something uh, which is a holy color so can you find gold in the picture so these kind of tasks are um, something that also for really um, young child can participate so there are no correct answers in a way that 
it's for example if you are not asking like who is the figure and what is happening here so in and especially if you are in a children's world for example that here where you can find water okay when was the uh, last time you were playing with water or you were washing things so these kind of questions are um, inviting child to involved in the picture even though uh, she or he doesn't really know the picture yet. And also the senses, so you can ask like, what kind of sounds you could hear there? Okay, the water sounds very nice. Okay, what about when you are riding a horse? What kind of sound you can hear? Okay, let's make that all together. So um, that might be a good start before we go in deeper in the picture. But then now with you, I think we go that read and analyze tasks. And um, maybe we can start in here. When you are pointing to that uh, point, uh, you can see the three men riding the horse. And uh, those are the, those so-called three wise men from the East, how it's described in the Bible, who have heard about something has happened in Bethlehem and uh, they are following the star as they were told. And so the way uh, close to the place where there was a newborn baby in the cave. And that information can be found in here, but unfortunately in Finnish <laughs> at the time. And here are different kind of figures so you can also ask children that are these uh, humans and if not from what do you recognize that those are angels who are glorifying and actually those angel angels uh, uh, told to shepherds a little bit down below you can see see it there and shepherds were very astonished what they have seen, what they are seeing there, and what the, the angels, how the angels glorify the thing what has happened. And here we can see the star of Bethlehem, which is above the baby Jesus. And this is interesting because many times in the Western art, this uh, shelter for the animals. Uh, it's a little different. So maybe you can tell a little bit this. Why is it in a cave? During those times uh, around Bethlehem, there was a lot of uh, caves and uh, most of uh, those were mentioned uh, to be as a shelter place for the animals. And as we know from the Bible, from the Gospel, uh, when Joseph and Mary entered to the Bethlehem, all the places, uh, how to say, normal places to be uh, there overnight, they were occupied and that's why they just uh, find an only one place where they can go. That was uh, a cave and uh, where there also were some animals inside that cave. Yeah. And as you mentioned, in the Western art, uh, it's mainly uh, a normal how to say cow house or shelter, just a, like a building. Yeah, exactly. And I think because if it's it is said to be a shelter of animals, and I think this tradition is um, more real because the uh, shepherds were close to the animals and there wasn't really this kind of cow houses during that mm. time. So this might be if you are looking in the historical critical sense of that time when Jesus was born, this might be uh, closer than the building built from woods or rocks as it many times in the Western art. We can see a little bit. Uh, do you want to tell something about Mary? and The interpretation for this position of Virgin Mary is that she like to emphasize or in the icon theology this emphasize that she is not the key person in this uh, icon 
the key is, of course, the new born Jesus Christ. When we are looking for Joseph, we have to go in the uh, lower part of the picture. So what is happening in here? Yes, that's very <laughs> interesting situation. And also children are many, many times asking who's the old man who is pointing with his hand uh, to Joseph. And uh, this is a uh, so-called uh, evil spirit or evil and uh, who is teasing Joseph and asking, are you sure that uh, the child is yours? That's the, that, that, that's the point. And uh, that's why also the Joseph is uh, in a position that he's thinking quite seriously, perhaps the situation, what's, what's the evil person is asking him. Yeah, I think this is really enchanting the imagination of children. So, for example, can they recognize situations where some kind of evil thoughts have already uh, came into their mind and how can they resolve the situation? And here, this is what I think this is also kind of funny that Jesus is here. Jesus is also here in the same picture. So what is happening in Lisa? As you previously mentioned, uh, <laughs> this is more or less uh, a surrealistic uh, interpretation. Christmas, uh, here we like to have to emphasize that this is not uh, describing how the Jesus Christ was baptized. This is not a baptism but this is uh, how the woman were uh, putting him in the bath, interpretation for that. So as, as we said, it was like a reading a comic. So one uh, story to another. If, uh, are there some aspects uh, from the icon uh, or the how to use icon in the religious education in general you want to share with us of course uh, an icon overall is the interpretation or expression of the holy bible of the events what has happened to the times uh, when the apostles and uh, other people were living on those times and uh, we can say that there are icons from both of the things or from the persons but uh, in the church here we are having most of all icons concerning what has happened to Virgin Mary or what uh, are telling about uh, things uh, concerning Jesus Christ. And of course, this icon is the key uh, what uh, we are having uh, in an iconographic way. Of and this is an additional information to the text what we can hear or what we can read. And uh, the, uh, most, uh, in most cases, also the icons are summarizing, in some sense, the contents of the Gospels. And if I have understood right, in the Orthodox religious education, or, uh, icons are really uh, in the center of the pedagogy. So you are using a lot of pictures and uh, use them in a really holistic manner so that children are able to read the images in for the churches, for example. Am I right? Sure. Yeah, so the Orthodox religious education is actually education of icons and pictures. And of course, the knowledge about the religion is an uh, important part, but they are used mostly jointly. So the children have a, a visual and image and also the knowledge uh, they can hear or read, but they are combined together to give this kind of holistic educational experience. That's right. And also they are supporting the church hymns. We can listen to church hymn. And as you mentioned, uh, that's the holistic way to handle the contents in our education. So all the senses you can hear, you can see, 
and yeah, then I'm I'm pretty sure that you have a more those meaningful experiences than just reading a book. Okay, so hopefully we were able to inspire you to use the pictures in your teaching, and hopefully we uh, were able to give you some examples how we use the pictures in the religious education in Finland. So good and inspiring moments for you uh, with the pictures in the educational settings.